All right, thanks for tuning in. Today we are going to do an image quality comparison of 28 different Pico projectors. Now, they're not all Pico projectors. Two of them are closer to full size, and a few of them you might consider portable rather than Pico. But nonetheless, we are going to tackle this today. So basically what I tried to do here is to list them from lowest quality to highest quality, give or take. It's all subjective. But since we have so many projectors, I'm actually only going to be using one image to uh, compare all of these. And this is that image. It has a lot of color and a lot of fine details we can use to compare. And if you check out some of my other videos, I actually do just head-to-head -head comparisons between two projectors. And I use uh, 16 different images that you see below here. So check those videos out if you want a better comparison of what the shadows and highlights of each projector are and some of the fine line details. First, I think I need to explain exactly how I took the photos of each projected image. In a fairly dark room, I projected onto this high-quality spandex projector screen. Now, since cameras adjust for brightness, it kind of makes everything look pretty good when you take a picture, uh, so I had to figure out a way around that. So what I did is I took my brightest projector, the AXA P7, and projected a white image on one side of the screen, and took the other projector and projected the image on the other side of the screen. Then I set the camera to spot metering and focused on the white image. This technique helped equalize the brightness of all the projectors across the board so you get the most realistic comparison of each of the projectors' brightness. And this is the final result. I'm going to have the original image on the left, the best projectors image on the right, which is the AXA P7, and I'll be changing the middle image so that you can do a fair comparison. And to top it off, we'll zoom in on each image to compare the details more closely. And one quick note about the spandex projector screen I'm using. You can see the small hook in the upper left hand uh, corner of the frame here. Once you have five of these screwed into your ceiling and they're barely noticeable, this screen will go up in under a minute. And here's an example of that. You can barely see the hooks in the ceiling there and uh, this is sped up a little bit but you can see how easy it is to hang this screen up. And once you have it hung up you just use two bungees to stretch the corners and it's that fast. And I do have a link in the description for this screen. So our first comparison here is probably the lowest quality of the projectors against the highest quality projector. The Sony Portable HD is a laser projector, and as you can see, it is very dull in brightness compared to the very bright AXA P7. And zooming in, we can see the Sony Portable HD loses a lot of the fine line details in the hair. Next up, we'll compare the LG PH150 rated at 130 lumen and a 1280 by 720 resolution. You can see how much darker it is than the very bright AXA P7. And when we zoom in on this one, you can see how much less detail the LG projector has. Next, we'll compare the AXA P2A cube projector. And we have noticeably less brightness and less uh, detail than the higher resolution uh, AXA P7. And zooming in, we see how much less detail the 480p AXA cube projector has. And next up we have the Vamvo Ultra Mini with a false claim of 1800 lumens. You can see how much darker it is than the 600 lumen AXA P7. And zooming in you can see the 480p resolution of the Vamvo uh, does not produce the fine details of the 1080p AXA P7. And here we have the Asus Zenbeam. I was a little disappointed in this one coming from Asus. And it actually doesn't even have an HDMI input, it's only a USB. The Asus Zen Beam rated at a 150 lumen is uh, pretty dull. And zooming in, you can see how much uh, fine details you lose. Here we have the Ape Man M4 Mini with the slightly strange rating of 50 to 100 lumen. And it's actually slightly brighter than the last projector we looked at, the 150 lumen Asus Zen Beam. And zooming in, we can see the much lower quality compared to the AXA P7. Next up is the Tomy C800 projector. At 100 lumen, it is not nearly as bright as our AXA P7. And zooming in, we can see much of the detail of the hair is lost. And here we have the ever popular Nebula Capsule soda can size projector. This is a cool projector with great sound, but as you can see, the image uh, is not quite up to snuff. Zooming in, you can see the lack of detail due to its low 480p resolution. Next up is the Optima LV-130 rated at 300 lumen, but as you can see it's not much brighter than the uh, Nebula capsule we just saw. 
And zooming in, we see the low 480p resolution of the Optima just isn't able to reproduce the fine details. Here we have the Asus S1, which produces a much better image than the Asus Zen Beam we saw earlier. That being said, it still has a low 480p resolution. And when we zoom in, we can see the lack of resolution. So here we have the Insignia Premium Audio Pico. I kind of consider this a poor man's nebula capsule. It has good sound and the image is somewhat on par. It's also uh, less than half the price of the nebula capsule. You may notice, however, when we zoom in, you can actually see the pixels of the Insignia projector, which can be distracting. This is the ViewSonic M1 projector. This actually won a design award a few years ago. It produces a nice image, but it's fairly low resolution at uh, 480p. And zooming in, you can see the large difference compared to the 1080p AXA P7. Here we have the Nebula Prism 2. This is not a Pico projector and doesn't run on a battery at all, but I had it, so I threw it in the mix. Even though it says it's 1080p uh, resolution, I'm not very impressed with the image. I also had a problem with the focus of this projector. If I made the image bigger than 70 inches, I just couldn't uh, get it uh, focused. So for that reason, I would probably stay away from the Nebula Prism 2. And zooming in, it does have more detail than the 480p projectors we looked at, but it is not nearly as good as the AXA P7. Next up is the LG PH30. We're getting into a little bit higher resolution now with a 720p. It's darker than the XAP7, but produces a nice image with good colors. And zooming in, the LG PH30 is probably the first projector that is uh, getting a little bit higher quality. So now that we're starting to get into some brighter projectors, I want to show you one more uh, feature of the screen I'm using. Here I'm projecting onto the front of the spandex projector screen, but if I pick up my camera and walk behind the screen, you can see that it is also capable of uh, backlight or rear projection. Most other types of screens can't do this, so uh, keep that in mind if you're ever in the market for a projector screen. And I do have the link, once again, down in the description below the video. Okay, so this is a cool little projector. It's a LaserBeam Pro C200. It actually does use a laser beam to project an image, so it's always in focus. The resolution is a little bit odd at 1366 by 768, but as you can see, it produces a pretty nice image. And zooming in, you can see it doesn't have the best detail, but uh, it is better than most of the projectors we've seen so far. Next up is the Mirror MP150. We have nice colors and decent brightness, but as we zoom in, you can see the fine details are a bit soft. Next up is the Optima ML550 with a 1280 by 800 resolution. And as you can see, the colors are very saturated. Uh, some people may not like that. And although it is fairly bright, the uh, fine line details are fairly soft. Now, you may be thinking, we just looked at this projector, but this is the Optima ML750. It's the brighter version of the last one we looked at, but to tell you the truth, I don't really notice much of a difference in the brightness between the two. It has the same overly saturated colors and soft details, as we can see here. This is the ZTE S Pro 2. This is a pretty cool little projector. It has a touch screen on top and a digital focus which is a nice feature to have with these smaller projectors. Here you can see it produces a nice image with uh, good brightness and decent colors. And zooming in, we see the details are a bit soft, but they're better than the last two Optima projectors. Here we have the LG PH300. And we get a decent image, fairly similar to the ZTE S Pro 2. And zooming in, it does seem to have a little bit better detail than the ZTE, but that could be partially due to just better contrast. So here we have a battle of the AXAs, the AXA P300 versus the AXA P7. The P300 has been out for a few years, and the AXA P7 just came out in 2019. The colors are different from the AXA P300, but uh, it does produce a nice image anyway.
And zooming in, you can see the P300 does have pretty good contrast, but of course the lower resolution doesn't produce as fine of details. So here's a newer version of the last projector. This is the AXA P300 NEO. And once again, you can see the colors are a little bit different, but uh, it does produce a nice overall image. And zooming in, we do notice the lower resolution in the detail areas. So here we have the Nebula Mars light. It is a little bit bigger than the other projectors, but this is probably my favorite projector for outdoor use. And the reason for that is because its built-in battery can run it for up to three hours, and it has a great speaker. And you can also see it produces a pretty decent image. And zooming in, you can see the lower 720p resolution produces somewhat softer details, but it is a fairly bright picture. Since I mentioned that's my favorite projector for outdoor use, I might as well show you how easy it is to set up the spandex projector screen and attach it to a backdrop stand. This is a heavy-duty backdrop stand. They're about 50 bucks on Amazon. Uh, the feet are wider, so it's less likely to tip over if you get a gust of wind. So it's fairly easy to set up. You raise it to about six feet high, then you take the silver spandex projector screen, which is better for outdoor use. It won't get as dirty as the white one. And you just attach it with two spring clips and stretch it out. And there's three more spring clips you can attach the top. Next, you uh, just raise the screen to the desired height and take the last two little 12-inch bungees and stretch the bottom corners. Pretty simple. So here I'm projecting onto the front of that uh, silver spandex projector screen with the AXA P7 we've been looking at. And uh, if I pick the projector up, you'll see that this screen also is capable of the rear projection. All right, moving on, here we have the AXA P450 Pro. I believe this projector has been discontinued, so you might be able to find one for a bargain. And as you can see, you get a pretty decent image from the P450 Pro. And zooming in, you can see good contrast in the details, but the lower 800 resolution uh, produces not quite as fine of details. Here is the LG PH550 with an up to 550 lumens rating. And for some reason, you'll notice the blue colors are very saturated. And zooming in, we get similar uh, details as the last few projectors. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this, so we'll go with Wowoto H9. These are actually fairly high quality projectors. You can see the image is fairly bright with decent colors. And zooming in, you'll see the lower resolution cannot match the AXA P700 1080p resolution. The AXA P7 projector is actually one of the few uh, true 1080p smaller projectors out there that can run on a battery. It's also one of the brightest, smaller projectors I've seen, and it has some of the best colors. And to demonstrate that, we're going to put it head-to-head -head against a full-size BenQ W1070 projector. And here you can see how good the little AXA P7 actually is. Here you can see the full-size BenQ uh, reproduces the colors a little bit better to the original image, and the detail might be a little bit finer, but... For the size of the AXA P7, it is very impressive. All right, I hope you got a lot out of that video. That was quite a bit of work. And if you want to do me a favor, you can check out the projector screens. Here is the Amazon page of what the silver screen looks like. And this is what the white screen, uh, basically the indoor screen, looks like. You can use either of these, both out and indoor, but uh, the choice is up to you. Now, with all that being said, here's one final word of caution. As with anything, beware of low-quality imitators. Here you can see how many sellers are offering basically the same cheap mass-produced cookie-cutter screen made in China. And these are about half the price of the Made in the USA screen that I showed you. The quickest and easiest way to uh, spot the knockoff version is that it has a black border around it. Now this black material doesn't have the same stretchability as the white spandex, which causes wrinkles when you hang it. You'll notice the screen on the left doesn't have this black border and doesn't have the wrinkling problem. Here you can see the product images from the manufacturers on the top and the actual product image, what it looks like from uh, customer pictures on the bottom. 
and as you can see the one with the black border does not hang very well. The next thing to note are the quality of the corners. The Made in the USA screen has nice clean corners and the Chinese import with the black borders are just rough and not very high quality. As you can see the grommet is almost popping out in the top photo on the right there. And several of the reviews actually complained about that happening. And the biggest difference is in the quality of the fabric. Look how tight the weave is on the Made in the USA screen on the left compared to the cheap copy on the right. This is the reason the uh, higher quality screen costs twice as much. The loose weave of the cheaper screen uh, lets so much light pass through that you lose a lot of the color saturation and the image is not nearly as sharp. So those last couple of pictures I pulled right off the Amazon page and this next demonstration I filmed myself. This is the fabric from the cheaper $30 screen with the black border. You can see how uh, thin the material is. And here's the example of the higher priced uh, made in the USA screen. You can see how much thicker the material is and it's a lot smoother as well. So I think the last thing I need to mention about this is the higher quality screen. It comes with hooks and bungees, whereas the cheaper one, it comes with these plastic little tabs you stick on the wall. Now the advantage of having hooks that you actually screw into the ceiling allows you to hang it in front of things if you have a staircase or, or bookcases in the way. With the little plastic hooks they include with the cheaper screen, you pretty much have to stick it right to the wall, meaning you need an empty wall space, which is not always available. So to me it seems like the manufacturer of the cheaper screen kind of misses the whole point of being able to hang this wherever you want. So once again, thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this information useful, and I put a link to the two projector screens below the video in the description.